Good morning, and thank you very much for joining us. Uh, for those of you who tried to join us last week when we had some technical issues, thanks so much for joining us again. We had such an overwhelming participation on the call last week that our technology actually just couldn't handle the volume. So we really appreciate you joining us again today. And we are using a different technology, as you've noticed, so we're confident that we will be able to get this done today. We know how challenging these times are for you, and we are really here to support you. Today, we wanted to take the opportunity to share some updates with you and to provide an opportunity to hear about some of the challenges facing small businesses in our city. I'd like to provide you with an overview of our agenda so that you'll know how we're going to spend the next hour. First, I will ask uh, Mayor Patrick Brown to say a few words, and then our Economic Support Task Force co-chairs, Regional Councillors Michael Pileschi and Paul Vicente will say a few words. And next, next, we have a few speakers uh, from our partners lined up. First, we have from the Government of Canada, Etienne René Massy, Director General with Innovation Science Economic Development Canada, as well as uh, Benoit Tessier and Mark Lehman. Then we will have Susie Godfrey from the Downtown BIA, Todd Lett from the Brampton Board of Trade, Andrea Barrett from the Black Chamber of Commerce, and Angela Kurtzig from the Ontario Ministry of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. After hearing from our partners, we will hear from some of our local businesses, raising some of the questions and challenges that you've been facing. And then we will turn it over for questions from you. If we're not able to get to your question today, you will have the opportunity to connect with us after the call, and we will share our contact details. To ask a question today, please press star 3 on your phone now. Throughout the call, we will also be asking three polling questions, and we'll get those uh, to those a little bit later, and we'll share the results with you during the call as well. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to Mayor Patrick Brown for his opening remarks, please. Well, thank you, uh, Claire. Uh, for those that don't know, Claire is our uh, Director of Economic Development, um, and thank you for everything you've been doing, Claire. So good morning. Thanks for joining us today. We know that these are very challenging times for you, and we want to support you the best we can. We have set up four special task forces to help our community manage through this COVID-19 pandemic. One of those task forces is focused on supporting our business community during this challenging time. We are committed to doing what we can to help all our businesses weather this storm. It's not just a health pandemic, it's an economic tidal wave. Last week, some of you completed a survey we sent out on the impact of COVID-19 on your business. Thank you for those who responded. We had over 150 responses, giving us a good sense of how the community felt. Through the survey, we learned that 75% of you felt a strong negative impact on your business, which I think is pretty obvious given how damaging COVID-19 has been for the economy. You also told us your concerns. You told us that you were concerned about your employees, that you need more economic relief measures from the provincial and federal governments, that you need financing, preferably to cover immediate expenses like leases. You want to protect your business, your employees. It's a family that you have built. Our, our team in economic development has been reviewing the feedback and providing answers to your important questions. That's why we are here today, to hear about your issues that you're facing and how we can help as a team here in Brampton. Over the past few weeks, the city has taken immediate steps to help support you. For example, we deferred property taxes for five months, where it was only 60 days in Toronto or 90 days in Mississauga. Brampton has shown additional compassion for those businesses struggling through this difficult period. We've also acceler accelerated our payments on invoices owed to local vendors and suppliers to 14 days on best efforts. And thank you for the Board of Trade for that suggestion. We welcome all good ideas. In addition, the federal government made an announcement on Friday with a number of measures to help small businesses. We have representatives from Innovation, Science, and Economic Development Canada on the agenda to speak to the programs and take your questions. I have to say I was particularly encouraged by Prime Minister Trudeau's announcement of the 75% wage subsidy. I'm on a weekly call with the Deputy Prime Minister, Christia Freeland, and other big city mayors, and I know that they have some awareness um, to how difficult it is to small businesses right now. So uh, I'm looking forward to this call. I'm looking forward to hear how we can help you and how we can advocate for you. I'll now ask my colleagues, Regional Councillors Michael Pileschi and Paul Vicente, to say a few words. Uh, Councillor uh, Pileschi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to echo some of the words in the Mayor and just saying that we're here for you. We want to do all we can to help. 
I've been a lifelong resident of Brampton, and my father was a local business owner for many years. And I absolutely understand all of the challenges that go along with owning a business. I saw the ups and downs over the years, but nothing like we are facing today. So I will ensure that we are doing all we can to help you get through this. I'd like to turn it over to Councillor Vincente. Councillor? Thank you, Councillor Fleshy. And I'd like to welcome everyone who is joining us here today on this call. As the Vice Chair of Economic Development and Culture Committee for Council, and as a small business owner for almost 30 years, I understand the lived experience of managing and sustaining a business. I have a keen interest in ensuring that we are doing all that we can to support you during this challenging time. We value your collective wisdom in informing us in this process. We see the recent measures from the federal government in being key to helping people. People are the basis and the foundation of our economy, and we are very supportive of what the federal government has done for them. When this crisis is over, businesses will be able to resume serving people. In the meantime, we want to ensure that you have the most up-to-date information and that we are listening to you to identify what more the federal, the provincial, and, munis and our municipal government can do for you. So we ask that you please help us to identify the gaps of where we can still do more. After all, we're all in this together. We are going to be running a poll question before we get to some of our speakers. And so we're going to start off with our first polling question. The question is, have you received any form of rent relief from your landlord? Press one for yes, press two for no. Once again, our polling question is, have you received any form of rent relief from your landlord? Press one for yes and two for no. We'll share the results of the poll as they become available later in the call. We're now gonna provide opportunity for our partners to say a few words. First up, from the Government of Canada, we have Etienne René Massy, the Director General of Innovation, Science and Economic Development for Canada. Etienne, are you there? Hi, yes I am. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can. Great, great. So thanks for the opportunity to speak uh, to you and to uh, the businesses of, in the Brampton area. Um, my, my name is Etienne Messi. I'm the Director General for Small Business at uh, Innovation Science and Economic Development. And I'm also joined by Benoit Tessier, uh, who is the Director General of Skills uh, at uh, ICED as well. So my goal was to provide you a bit of an overview of the measures that the Government of Canada has uh, announced so far uh, for businesses, but also for individuals, because entrepreneurs are also very much individuals and impacted by uh, this whole crisis. And I will note that a lot of these measures, they're not all uh, from my department. There's a range of departments that have been involved in the response. So uh, I'll be happy to, Ben and I will be happy to take some questions at the back end of my quick uh, notes. But um, we may not have the full answers just quite yet, because uh, we are working very quickly. And as the Prime Minister and the Minister of Finance uh, and all other ministers have expressed, this is a very um, dynamic situation. We are uh, seeing the impacts continuously. And as you will have seen, the government has announced a series of measures, including the latest measures that were announced on Friday. And there's actually another news conference later this afternoon, which will provide a bit more details on those additional measures from Friday. So I would just sort of for businesses, the key pieces that have been done is the government has looked at uh, to avoid layoffs and help small businesses keep their staff. Uh, we are providing, uh, we've extended the work sharing program, minimized the administrative burden and accelerated the uh, pace uh, by which we are putting workplace work sharing agreements. Work sharing is available through the employment insurance program. Uh, we are also um, looking, and the government announced the wage subsidy uh, or increased its wage subsidy program from 10% to 75% on Friday. I would love to be able to give you a few more details on that today, but I believe that the Minister of Finance later this afternoon will be providing those details. We've also increased access to credit uh, from the initial response, um, both uh, economic development, uh, sorry, export development, Canada and the Business Development Bank of Canada have been 
putting in place additional measures. And on Friday, the Minister of Finance introduced a new range of measures that will be put in place um, through the financial institutions across the country to help Canadians. And I will draw your attention to one, which is the micro-granting uh, facility that will be backed by Export Development Canada, but be offered by all the financial institutions in Canada, where an entrepreneur will be able to access up to $40,000 in an interest-free loan if it's paid within um, by December 31st, 2021. And 25% of that loan would be forgivable if it's paid within that timeline. Additional details on the exact parameters of these measures are going to be announced again, I believe, uh, today. I suspect the Minister of Finance will give us the details. He had mentioned on Friday during his news conference that we would be working over the weekend, and I can confirm that there was a lot of work over the weekend to try to nail down those details. So we will see how that goes. For farmers, the government has also done measures, and for food producers, Farm Credit Canada, which is a crown corporation, has been provided with additional capital to help that sector of our economy, which is critical. And the, gover the governor of the Bank of Canada and the Minister of Finance and the Office of Superintendent for Financial Institutions have also taken a range of measures to increase liquidity and make available more capital to Canada's banks to be able to lend to Canadian businesses. Uh, to help them. <clears throat> and finally, uh, from a tax perspective, the Government of Canada has looked and uh, taken a number of measures to delay uh, the payment of income taxes uh, for businesses and also deferral sales tax remittance and cus customs duty payments for uh, businesses across the country. And for, I will also mention, that one last measure I'd like to mention is that the Canada Emergency Response Benefit is a very important benefit, um, and it is helping Canadians across the country. It is to ensure that in individuals that are not eligible to EI or are taking care of uh, sick quarantine or are children who are no longer in school are available for this emergency response benefit. Uh, and that is, um, we will be sort of bringing that online later this week uh, on April 6th, I believe is the date, and hope to have payments out in the next 10 days after. And that's important, I think, for self-employed entrepreneurs who um, are uh, individuals at first and need to have those um, a bit of relief as well uh, from their part. I will note, um, I, I, I can go, there's a lot of details that are associated to all of these. And I would just mention that all of the information is being sort of corralled on one site that the Government of Canada has put together. And the web address is canada.ca slash covid hyphen 19 hyphen business. And if you go to that website, you will find all of the information. So again, it's canada.ca slash COVID dash 19 dash business. And that website is continuously being updated as we receive more information from all departments and agencies that are participating in the response. And we uh, will continue to keep that website updated. And a last measure that I would announce is that we are working very closely with the Canadian Chamber of Commerce, who is putting in place daily uh, webinars on different issues and topics that are impacting the uh, Canadian businesses. And government officials are coming on these webinars to address very specific questions uh, that uh, relate to the measures. The webinars are being recorded and are being posted live on the Canadian Chamber of or being posted uh, not live but afterwards for the. Um, for businesses to sort of listen in on those measures. So I think that provides a broad overview of uh, the measures that we have. I'm happy to take some questions or turn it over to the next speaker. Thank you, um, Etienne. Uh, it's uh, Mayor Patrick Brown here. We're grateful to have our partners from the federal government uh, uh, on the call. I'm looking at the question list on my screen here. I see there's a lot of questions in two areas. One, on rent relief, are there any programs through the BDC or any other federal agencies that help small businesses with rent relief given right now they simply do not have customers coming in and the ability to pay their rent um, is uh, almost impossible. The second question I see a lot of people um, asking uh, is in regards to how long it will take for the wage subsidy to be delivered back to the business. So a business is trying to stay operational um, how long will that uh, return from the federal government uh, take when they're deciding whether to keep a few employees um, on? And so I want to thank the people that asked those questions. I see Mr. Siddiqui, I see uh, uh, 
uh, Mr. Walsh, Mr. Wildley, and Mr. McName. I, I appreciate that, that uh, um, those questions. Um, so why don't we let the federal government um, ask uh, and uh, a answer that question? So on, on rent relief and on the wage subsidy, how long it takes. Thank you very much for those questions. And I know those are questions that we are getting uh, from all uh, sides. And we, we actually host a, a daily call that actually is concurrent to this call, and we have over a 1,000 business associations and industry on the call. Rent relief has been one of the primary concerns, and I'm very aware that rent comes due on Wednesday for all businesses. The Government of Canada hasn't put in place a specific measure that addresses rent relief, but I think the measures that were announced on Friday to provide this, this micro-granting instrument to Canadian financial institutions is a stopgap measure uh, that will help Canadian entrepreneurs get capital to be able to pay rent. Um, and this is not, and the, the, my second comment is not to deflect here, and I, I am very, very conscious of the impact of rent. Um, but from a, a jurisdiction perspective, rent relief is uh, rent are of a provincial responsibility. It does not mean that the federal government does not understand that issue, and we are very seized with it, and we are looking at what we can do. But as you will see in other provinces, it is the provincial governments that have moved forward to help on that piece, uh, on that immediate piece. On the second question with regard to the wage subsidy, um, the details of the wage subsidy were, again, were worked over the weekend, um, the full details of which I don't have, but we do know and we have been exploring every means possible because we know getting this wage subsidy to businesses is key uh, to help them continue to sort of maintain their employment relationship for, with employees. Important, really, employment relationships through um, the crisis will be important when we hit recovery to make sure that you have that available staff. I am hoping that today's announcement um, by the Minister of Finance will provide us with additional details and we'll also deal with that question, which was one of the first questions that once uh, that we have been talking about is how do we can we expedite this payment very quickly. So I'm sorry I don't have a definitive answer on that, but I do know that we are very seized by it. Thank you, Etienne, and thank you, Benoit, for joining us here today. We really value your time. So, folks, we're now going to move on to our next speaker. Our next speaker is Susie Godfrey. She is the Executive Director of the Brampton Downtown Business Improvement Association. Susie, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Perfectly, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, good morning, everyone. And I just wanted to thank you all for joining on today's call. And I wanted to thank Mayor Patrick Brown and Brampton City Council for organizing this economic task force. On behalf of the downtown Brampton Business Improvement Area and our Board of Directors, I want to say that we are all in this together and together we are stronger. For all of us in the BIA community, in the downtown community, our top priority is to ensure the health and safety and well-being of our downtown businesses and, of course, the residential community at large. As downtown community builders, we are continuing to collaborate with our partners to keep everyone connected in this most difficult time. Um, while today collaborating is by uh, many virtual meetings like this morning's or emails and text messages, no more than ever since today, we must continue to leverage each other and uh, the Brampton small business community. I wanted to say the BIA is a conduit of information for our 300 plus business members and 140 landlords, and we have been offering daily updates and most importantly, emotional support for all of our downtown uh, BIA members. And I did want to say uh, Friday's news with regards to the um, 75% wage subsidy for small business was very promising, and we will be uh, sending out more details as that program comes uh, out, and I understand that will be coming out later today. I did want to say that we have a lot of information on the Downtown Brampton BIA website, and I just wanted to, to tell you what that is. It's downtownbramptonbia.ca backslash COVID-19. And I also wanted to share with you that our office is open. All of our staff are working remotely and are available to all of our downtown business community members. 
Um, if you want to reach out to myself, Tegan and Alex, we're available phone, email, and text. I wanted to also note our board members are working and networking with many businesses in the community. And um, we're talking to our economic partners on a, on a daily basis. We did send out a letter on behalf of the Board of Directors to advocate for, for our business community and to help keep you all in business. And again, Friday's news was very promising with the 75% wage subsidy. The BIA is also speaking with the Ontario BIA and International Downtown Association on a weekly basis just to, to keep connected with downtowns across Ontario and North America. And um, as I mentioned earlier, we have been sending out daily communications to our members through email, and um, we are working on a, a feel-good marketing campaign through our social media channels and website. And we have a few meetings coming up this week that I wanted to mention. We have a marketing meeting coming up this Wednesday at 9.30 a.m., and Tegan will be emailing out all those details, so I encourage all of our members to uh, participate. We also will be setting up virtual coffee talks every Friday, starting this Friday, April the 3rd at 9.30. And then we also are working on some educational workshops with regards to mental health, finance, and marketing. So again, all of those uh, details will be coming out through email. And if you have any questions or you just want to talk, please give me a call. Uh, my mobile is 647 627 5105. Thank you so much, Susie, for all of that uh, information. Folks, uh, we're just going to reveal now the results of our first poll. The question was, have you received any form of rent relief from your landlord? And the results are in. Only 15% of you said yes. An overwhelming majority, 85% of you have said no, that you have not received any form of rent relief from your landlord. We want to thank you for answering that poll. We'll move on to our next speaker. He is Mr. Todd Letts. He's the Executive Director of the Brampton Board of Trade. Mr. Letts, are you there? Yes, I am. Are you able to hear me, Councillor? Perfectly. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, and I want to pick up on uh, the results of your poll today. We've got uh, the first of the month happening on uh, Wednesday. And I know that through our uh, work uh, with uh, the small business community, which is the largest uh, uh, group, largest segment of the membership of the Brampton Board of Trade, this is uh, the issue that is uh, weighing highest on their mind. In my uh, uh, brief comments, uh, I want to uh, talk about specific actions that have been taken and can be taken to address that issue, to address the uh, steep decline in revenue that uh, our members are uh, uh, experiencing, and also uh, the, uh, the continued uh, expenses that occurred. For those of you that don't know, uh, the Brampton Board of Trade is a small business. It's a small, non-profit uh, business. It's a business uh, uh, where of... Uh, uh, business people, we serve over 2,400 voting members that employ over 45,000 uh, people in Brampton, and uh, that uh, one in every three jobs in town is uh, provided by a Board of Trade member. We are deemed and we're deemed an essential workplace largely uh, for our work in advocacy and the services in supporting uh, the local and global supply chain. Uh, we've uh, been in contact with 200 small businesses this past week. 100 have responded to uh, our survey. If you haven't responded to our survey uh, and you would like uh, resources, you can visit BramptonBOT.com slash COVID-19. BramptonBOT.com slash COVID-19. So the three big issues that we're hearing, revenues declined, expenses continue, and rent is due Wednesday. Uh, on the revenue side, uh, April 1st, uh, you know, business continues. We've uh, had a lot of constraints uh, put on our small business community. Some are deemed essential, some are not. Uh, but the pro and, and what that means is that our businesses have been helping one another and have been uh, looking for ways to uh, innovatively deliver their products as to the best of their abilities. I know that doesn't apply with a, a lot of businesses, but some are doing that. On April 1st, on Wednesday, at, uh, at uh, 10 a.m., 
We have a uh, Facebook Live with uh, Shiraz Siddiqui of uh, Leverage Consulting, and the focus is going to be sales in unprecedented times. The focus is prioritizing the filling of your sales funnel now so that uh, when customers are ready, uh, they're ready to buy, you uh, will, in fact, be uh, ready. Now, expense reduction. Our members uh, have been heard. It's good to know that the federal government has listened uh, to our message and that relief programs that were previously announced in this call uh, are, uh, are underway. Uh, the small business community and the Board of Trade have a very clear message uh, to uh, uh, the government, though. Thank you is our first message, and, and secondly, it's not enough. And that's the message that we're hearing from all segments of the business community is that we can't wait and rely solely on the government. The government has a contribution to make, and they are making that contribution. We need to believe in ourselves. We need to uh, help one another through what is forecast to be not a 10-week event, but a 30-week uh, event. So that is very sobering for a lot of small business people. Um, the rent. Let's get to that, and I'll finish my, uh, my comments uh, here with a couple of ideas. You know, we've talked to uh, landlords, and we've posted a video message. You can find that on our website, encouraging tenants and landlords and banks to come to agreements, deferrals, payment plans in place before Wednesday, April 1st. We've reached out to landlords, some of whom are providing great examples, and encourage them to reach out to their landlord network uh, and set uh, um, uh, similar payment plans. We've also written the Minister of Small Business and Minister of Municipal Affairs and asked the provincial government to provide uh, aid or extend rent banks. And I want to say kudos to Mayor Brown Councillor Vicente, Councillor Pelleschi, and all of Council for the speed at which they responded to the five-month property tax deferral uh, and uh, the accelerated payments to small vendors and, and nonprofits. Please know that this is still not enough. There are more things that we can do, and uh, we will continue to advocate for business. Here's the last two things. One of the uh, recommendations that we made to Council in a suite of 10 recommendations was the question of what can we do to, to accelerate getting through this, uh, to get through the darkest periods and to the other side. What are we doing to accelerate building permits? We're hearing from our small business construction people, uh, particularly those that do a lot of home renovations because a lot of people are spending a lot of time in their homes right now, um, uh, that they cannot get permits quickly. Uh, well, they can't get permits at all from the city of uh, Brampton. It, the administration is currently closed. One of the things that I'd like from this uh, call is if we could explore who's in charge of service innovation at City Hall and how can we accelerate building permits. The second idea and action, and this will be my final comment, is about a revolving loan fund. Yes, the federal government has a variety of programs, but as Etienne uh, explained, they will take some time uh, to get cash to small business. What if there was a complementary revolving loan fund for Brampton? And I guess my question to uh, uh, the uh, leaders of this task force and the mayor and council is, would you be interested in exploring the establishment of a community loan fund? Maybe we could get some, a banking partner, a corporate foundation partner, a community foundation partner to kick in and help small businesses sooner rather than later. Thank you very much. Okay, well, thank you, uh, Todd. Uh, on the first point of, about building permits, uh, you should know that uh, City Hall is not closed for building permits and that uh, Richard uh, Ford, our Director of Planning, has actually been having his staff hand deliver them. Um, and so uh, just the other day, um, his staff were out uh, hand delivering building permits uh, around the city. And so if anyone has a problem with a building permit, let me know directly at patrick.brown at brampton.ca and we'll make sure it's hand delivered. I want to make sure that the work that can still happen does happen. These are important uh, uh, projects to stimulate our, our, our local economy. That's um, wonderful. And That's wonderful, Your Worship. Thank you for that. And we will shine a light on that uh, uh, service. Thank you for that. And, and I would note in, in terms of... Uh, a loan program with, with the banks, probably better suited to the BDC or the provincial government, but, but we can certainly look into that. We have some constraints under the Municipal Act, but, but uh, we, will, uh, we will investigate that as well. Thank you. Thanks.
Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Mr. Letts, for uh, raising those questions. Next up, we have Andrea Barrett. Andrea is the President of the Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce. Andrea, are you there? I am here. Good morning. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor Brown, and thank you, uh, Brampton Councillors, for setting up the Economic Task Force. On behalf of the Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce, we I uh, just want to send a heartfelt thank you to everything that Brampton has done for our members and for the Brampton community. I am a resident of Brampton. Um, I'll be brief. We are also pleased with the recent federal announcements that came out on Friday. And in alignment and agreement with the last two previous callers, we support everything that they have just said. I especially like Claude's idea of the revolving loan fund. So we are here for all businesses in the community, and one of our members um, has actually contacted us and has a supply of sanitizer. So if anybody out there is looking for hand sanitizer, please reach out to us and we will connect you with our member. You can reach us at info at blackchamber.ca, info at blackchamber.ca. Thank you so much, Andrea. And for our next speaker, we have Andrea Kurtzik. She's the, from the Ontario Ministry of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. Angela, are you there? Andrea Kurtzik, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? Perfectly. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, I first uh, want to thank the City of Brampton for organizing uh, today's call for small businesses. Uh, I'm a previous small business owner, and it's challenging enough running a business at the best of times. I, I can only imagine what you're going through. So um, I really do appreciate uh, uh, the, the call on behalf of small businesses. Um, I want to um, – I'm going to be list I am listening today to everybody's comments, whether it's speakers or those uh, of you from the small business community. Um, and I will be passing on these comments, the challenges, issues uh, to the province of Ontario. We've uh, set up uh, um, <clears throat> resources to allow for this flow of information. And uh, so, so I've been taking notes, and I will continue to do so throughout the call. Um, I just uh, and, and I, I'm not going to go through the list of, of uh, resources that are available because it's too long. But I do want to comment that the city of Branson has done an excellent job of updating their website on the various resources available. Uh, earlier in the call, we heard some of the provincial uh, resources. They're on the website. Uh, of course, there's also provincial, uh, et cetera. And um, so, so I really encourage uh, small business owners to continue checking the City of Brampton website because it is changing and updating uh, daily, and it's an excellent resource. Um, <clears throat> I want to uh, actually, while I'm not going to go through the list of programs, I do want to comment on two uh, that uh, may be helpful to this audience. Uh, the first is Stop the Spread a Business Information Line. It's called Stop the Spread Business Information Line. And so if any of you businesses have questions about uh, closures or at-risk uh, workplaces, you know, or how the emergency measures are impacting their business on employment. There is a uh, 1-800 number. Uh, it's manned Monday to Sunday from 8.30 in the morning to 5 p.m. The number is 1-888-444-3659. I repeat that. It's 1-888-444-3659. 5, 9, and that's Monday to Sunday, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. The other uh, comment I want to make is on the uh, uh, demand for emergency medical pr uh, products. I'm going to be heavily involved in this initiative, um, and there is a website that uh, was launched last week called Ontario Together. All you have to do is Google Ontario together and you'll get to the website. 
and, and this is a website for businesses who have medical, emergency medical products uh, or innovative ideas, any way you can contribute uh, towards this. Uh, so it's both a uh, form that you can fill out for uh, provincial uh, uh, ideas or procurement. There's also a link for the federal procurement. Uh, so I encourage you to check that out, Ontario Together. Um, and um, that's, that's all I want to comment on today. Thank you. Thank you, Angela, so much. And thank you to all of our partners. Now, before we get to some of our other speakers from the business community, we're going to ask our second poll question. The question is, as a small business owner, do you need any help with mental health support for you or your employees? Once again, as a small business owner, do you need any help with mental health support for you or your employees? Press 1 for yes. Press 2 for no. And so we'll move on to hear from some members of the business community. First, we're going to call upon Ria Ali from Little Dribblers. Ria, are you there? Hi, Mayor Brown. Yes, I am. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, first and foremost, good morning. Uh, I would like to thank all of the amazing people from the City of Brampton for putting this call together. Um, I truly appreciate it. Um, and yeah, so my name is Ria. I'm the Chief Excitement Officer or owner of Little Dribblers, North America's first and only children's basketball facility for many players ages 18 months to seven years old uh, with an educational spin. We are partnered with the NBA and have been in operation since September 1st, 2019 in Brampton. We are a lean startup who has been operating for six months and have been um, have made approximately $200,000 in sales since then. Uh, we have not taken any loans or investments to date. Instead, we have been operating solely by bootstrapping. Therefore, the majority of our profit has gone towards our business costs, um, consequently leading our cash flow to be low during the startup time. Of course, our number one priority is the health and safety of our children, staff, and families. As such, on Friday, March 13th, we made the decision to postpone all our classes and temporarily close due to COVID-19. Shortly after, the Premier's office um, also legally ordered us to close as we are an indoor children's recreation center. Um, therefore, for this closure period, all sales have ceased. Um, however, of course, our overhead, such as our rent, is um, still due. We contacted the BDC on Monday, March 16th, um, regarding the $100,000 loan uh, that was available and was informed that to qualify for any of their loans, we needed to be a revenue generating business for at least 24 months. Being that we have only been operational for six months, um, this option was not available to us, unfortunately. Um, additionally, we also do not qualify for any of the financial relief options from our bank, which is RBC, as they are only offering deferral options for existing credit at this time. And since we are a lean startup who've only been operating on bootstrapping um, from the sales of our customers, we didn't have any loans or credit, so we also didn't uh, qualify for those options. So in summary, we have been legally ordered to close by the Premier's office due to COVID-19, and therefore all our sales have ceased during this closure period. However, overhead costs such as rent are still due, and our cash flow is limited due to us being a lead startup business who operates exclusively on bootstrapping. Um, and we also don't qualify for BDC options as we have not been operating for 24 mo uh, months. So we really require financial assistance to cover our overhead expenses, and we were wondering if there are any grant or subsidies that the city can provide to help alleviate the cost of our commercial lease, um, specifically for startup businesses who haven't been operating for 24 months. Um, and uh, we really just don't feel like businesses should be penalized for prioritizing the health and safety of the public over our livelihood and you are really eager to hear the options that are available to us. Okay, thank you, Ria. Thank you for giving us that background on how you were doing. Uh, staff are listening to you, and we're, we're taking notes as everyone brings
opens up their own situation. And we will be communicating back to everyone who is on this call with answers and suggestions. Next up, we have Jessica Hoach from Aconic. Jessica Hoach, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Go ahead. Thank you again. Yes, thank you again, everyone. Um, so I represent the beauty industry. I have a barber shop at the Bramley City Center, and I also run a private career trades college uh, in Mississauga. Um, I, I do have a few questions, I guess, more so pertaining to our industry as well as, I guess, general business questions. Um, so my first uh, concern is, um, so we have uh, outstanding loans with BDC right now, um, and I already uh, was proactive. We reached out. Um, and uh, they are able to help us defer principal payments. But what we're still on the hook for, and I, I totally understand, but it's still the interest payments that are expected from us at this time. Um, is, there, is there some sort of provision that could assist us? I, I, if there's no revenue coming in, there's no revenue for anything. So interest is something that is still concerning for us at this time. Um, should I continue with all the questions, or should I pause and, and... Yeah, move on to your next question. We're taking notes as you go. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Great. Um, so uh, the $40,000 uh, temporary loan, um, I'm looking forward to hear more details as, as those come available. Uh, being the size of our location for the academy, in addition to kind of our, our, our prime retail space at the Bramley City Center... 40,000 doesn't give us much to see. Um, I'm going to be able to operate for about a month and a half, maybe two months with that to cover our rent if our, our landlords don't offer anything else. Um, so I think it's great. I just don't know if it's going to be sufficient. Um, next question is, um, I, I know that some people connected to this call, I'm kind of looking at their businesses. I think they fall in a very similar category. Uh, in that our business in the beauty industry is extremely uh, high touch and close contact related, as I feel it with children's daycare and denture, dental clinics and things like that. Um, so we did close prior to being advised to do so. Um, and my concern now that we're working towards, well, what is the comeback plan? And I, I feel that is, is there going to be any provisions in place of um, the health and safety and, and how services will be conducted um, once, I guess, this, this is lifted uh, or the ban? Just because I feel like the way that we operate in businesses may, may change, and uh, we want to do everything we can to prepare for those changes. Um, I'm referencing to an article I, I saw in Australia. I know that the personal beauty services there, uh, once people are back in operation, they had advised that it's going to be like a four-meter uh, uh, distance or square meter per, per patron. Um, so these, these things matter for us just because the way that we conduct business, um, again, very close contact. Um, I also know that... Uh, I feel that specifically for our industry, um, because the government all had mentioned that essential business is closed, but I do know that there are other players, and just for the health and safety sake, that are, uh, with all their better lack of uh, termination uh, terminology, um, still conducting services in home, just because they are home-based operations. And I feel that something needs to be said openly uh, at the government level to to say, you know, this is a violation um, so that we do not continue to jeopardize, you know, what everyone's trying to work hard for, which is stopping businesses. And I, I think that a lot of these independent uh, contractors in our industry are concerned because they don't fall under the different categories for EI and things like that. So uh, I feel that because of the fear of not being able to generate income, and clients as an essential service feel like they still need haircuts and personal services at this time. It's not allowed, but I don't think everyone realizes that message uh, pertains to themselves as well. So I'm, I'm hoping for the, the government to take a call to action to, to publicly say that 
this is not acceptable and it should stop whether you actually have a physical business location or it's actually in-house. Um, uh, most of the other questions I think um, has been addressed and most are financial related, so thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Claire, you had a comment? Um, I was just saying that a lot of the uh, items that you raised um, we are absolutely advocating to the province as well as the federal government with those types of, of issues. Um, our Brampton Entrepreneur Centre has had um, many calls from different uh, businesses, but a lot, I would say, um, a significant percentage are from um, businesses in your industry. Um, and so what we will do is we will continue to try and find those details for you, knowing that the eligibility criteria isn't firm or set yet from the federal government. Um, and I know that Etienne um, will let us know when things are settled, but know that, that we are advocating on your behalf and we are certainly paying attention to your sector um, and especially through our Brampton Entrepreneur Center. So if you have not connected yet, please do. Um, they, have, um, they are developing a Q&A uh, for your sector um, and so they can help you directly with, that, with those questions. Thank you so much, Claire. Next, uh, for our next member of the business community, we have Nime Opal. He is the owner of India Bazaar. Nime, are you there? Hi. Yes, I am. How are you? Thank you, everyone, for having me on the call. So we own a grocery store in Brampton, and I guess our experience is a little bit different than everybody else's. So what we have, the first challenge, and our biggest challenge is the number of people that are coming out. Um, we do have restrictions in terms of the amount of people that we let into the store. However, we're seeing uh, members of the families of four to five people that come out at a time. So is there anything that you're going to do about restricting the amount of people that can come out shopping? Thank you, Nimei. The other, that. yeah. Go ahead. You have one more question? Go ahead. I Just to add on to that, the amount of time spent into the store. So I find that our shopping stores, like you look at Freshco or Metro, People are spending about an hour in the store and they're buying two or three items. We're not a social gathering. I just don't know. Yesterday I've been trying to police it and I've had a lot of confrontations with customers who are really upset. I understand people are panicking or frustrated, but at the end of the day, we can't accommodate all that at, at the store, at our levels. Our employees are overworked, they're tired, and we really want customers to come in, buy their stuff, and just go home. Well, thank you for the very valid question. It's uh, Patrick Brown here. Um, we are concerned that there are still many people that aren't physical distancing. I had a case this morning of a bus route that I had photos sent to me where they weren't abiding by the half-capacity uh, buses, and I, I see that happening in grocery stores um, as well. Mm -hmm. What I would note is there was a new provincial rule announced yesterday of groups of no more than five people, um, and so it used to be 50 people, so that, that's quite a dramatic uh, change. I would also note uh, that last week I had a bylaw present a, a staff report to council of uh, bringing in fines for those that do not abide by social distancing. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say we're getting pretty close to enacting those fines if the public does not abide by what we're, what we're asking. You know, I, I saw photos the other day of people in, uh, in, in a park playing basketball. So we closed that basketball court. We, we, we took the nets down. And I hope that we don't need to have stricter um, measures where we actually have to start finding people, but I'll tell everyone on the call today, we'll start that if, if people don't listen. And so we need Brampton's goodwill. We need residents to offer us their goodwill in this. It's, it's about the health and safety of our city, but you have my promise that people continue not to listen. We will bring in fines and we will get a lot more aggressive. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, we do actually. Thank you so much. We really do need that. I, I mean, it's been since Friday. Since Monday, the announcements when Doug Ford came out, it was grocery stores were packed. So since Friday, the weekend came, and we thought, okay, people would stay home, but Friday was a party. Um, and it's not just us. If you go to Freshco, you go to Metro, you go to Sylvie's, it's the same thing there. Um, we've been trying to control. We've locked the doors at the, front of the uh, front of the stores, but what happens is people are so aggressive, they'll just come right to the front and they'll start fighting. So then it's like, do you call the police for things like this? It's just people are not being considerate. And I really hope that people are getting the message somehow, some way, that you don't need to shop every single day. Make be, you know, be, you need to be more proactive, have a list, come out for two weeks, get your stuff and go. So what I'm going to suggest is why don't you send me an email after this call 
patrick.brown at brampton.ca, um, and I'll connect mm-hmm. you uh, from someone from the, the Peel Police. If you notice an instance like this happening again, our chief, Nishan Darapa, has a high level of awareness of how critical this is, and um, you know, we, we can certainly have a police officer drop by um, if if people are simply ignoring the advice of, of the professionals that, that work in your store. And let me just lastly say, um, I realize that your team is taking on an enhanced risk uh, for, our, for our community. And so I, I just want to say um, thank you for the, the sacrifice that you're making. Thank you, Nimei. Next, thank we have... Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, for our next member of the business community, we have Lee Suhakets, registered massage therapist, on the move with massage. Are you there, Lee? Lee, are you there? No? Okay, so we'll move on to the next speaker. Uh, we'll hear from Serb and Sonny Kang, Auto Supreme Inc. Serb, are you there? Okay, so while we're waiting for them to get on the line, or we may move on to our next speaker, we're going to go to the results of our poll question. Our poll question was, as a small business owner, do you need any help with mental health supports for you or for your employees? 24% of you said that you did, and 76% said no. So we'll now move on to our next uh, member of the business community, Deep Mehta. Deep, are you there? I am here. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, thank you all uh, for putting this together. Thanks to Mayor and the team for holding this. Um, I am uh, the business owner for Control D Brampton. We are a uh, we're the first virtual reality arcade um, in Brampton, uh, part of a franchise that is the largest franchise in the world um, currently for virtual reality. But we are only 16 locations. Uh, nationally or internationally, so it shows you how small this industry is. Uh, I think that I am very much, um, um, you know, uh, like many other businesses in town. Um, you know, I've, I've befriended quite a few D-minded, uh, the guys behind Brampton Proud, Low Zone 360, Top Rock Climbing, J Red's Restaurant, all of these entertainment type businesses, and we have, I think, we all have very, very much the same concerns. Uh, the biggest thing right now, um, just as I believe it was little, little dribblers that brought up, we are 18 months in. We don't qualify for anything, not a darn thing that has been put through right now. Um, and on top of that, what's, what's more concerning uh, to that is that giving us more loans and deferrals is just prolonging inevitable. So if you're going to defer our payments or you're going to give us more loans, six months down the road when all these loans come due, or a year down the road and all these loads can do, you're going to see just as many bankruptcies. Um, that's not a, not in my opinion, not in, me, in any of the businesses I've been talking about. You look at countries like the UK, which are offering 25,000 pound grants to their businesses just to, so they can keep their lights on through this, through this period. That is aid. That is something where we need uh, actual help. We don't need further handcuffs with more loans. Putting our homes on the lines with personal guarantees, that kind of thing is just not going to fly. Um, the, the second point I need to make is the insurance companies. Many of us uh, have insurance policies that have business continuity uh, in there. My particular policy, a, and I've spoken to a couple of businesses that have policies that aren't, um, they don't specifically call out pandemic as a force majeure so they could, so insurance companies can kind of wiggle out of paying it. You know, mine clearly states that if the government mandate shuts us down, then we are eligible for business continuity. All of these insurance companies are fighting it now, tooth and nail, uh, you know, trying to find every legal loophole possible. Again, in the UK, um, they, they came up with legislation that prevented these insurance companies from saying, no, we're not going to pay. So something along those lines to help us, uh, help not only the taxpayers, and number two, um, uh, the government have to dole out every single dollar. We've paid for these insurance policies. Like, we should be able to utilize them. Um, you know, so that's another point number two. And my last point is an immediate support system for landlords. Um, and, you know, as they can't said, uh, it's a provincial thing, maybe a city thing. So a support system for landlords, which are, who will then be required to turn that around to their SMEs. 
um, for at least four months after this crisis has ended. This business is like ours where we are a social gathering place. People come for birthday parties. They come with friends to be together are going to have a prolonged period of trust and uh, safety uh, concerns that people are going to have when this is all over. And it's not going to end like a flight switch. It's going to subside slowly. So that all of our types of businesses, little dribblers, us, um, any of the children's play places, um, trampoline parks, like we're all going to have the same issue that the trust factor is going to take forever to reload. Um, you know, we as a business at 18 months, we were starting to peak over the horizon, break even. January, February were one of the, some of the best months for us that we've had since we started. And then the rug was pulled out from underneath us. Um, you know, if we don't get some sort of relief package that's an actual aid package or something to help landlords, you're not going to have all of these unique different types of businesses left in Brampton because we're not a subway. We're not like, you know, these major corporations that, that, that can afford, um, you know, two, three, four months of no, no revenue. In fact, we've had the opposite. We've had not only all the revenue stop, but we've had so many thousands of dollars go out the door back to customers because they've canceled birthday parties, they've canceled group events, um, all of those major things. So every day that goes by, my account is being further depleted and not with bills. So those are the three main points that I wanted to make. Uh, um, you know, and, and like I said, loans are not paid and loans are not helping us. You're prolonging the inevitable, um, you know, especially for small businesses like ours that are just getting their heads above water and you're going to drown us even further at this point. So I'm hoping that, um, you know, the federal government understands that and loosens the, the rules. Number one, um, uh, like BDC needing 24 months, that doesn't help so many of us. And number two, has a real aid package put together. Thank you. Well, thank you, Deep, for um, uh, the, the advocacy and the, and the questions, and certainly our heart goes out to uh, the difficulty that your, your business is facing right now. I would say uh, I've heard what you've mentioned uh, a few times. I will certainly bring it up on my weekly call with um, the Deputy Prime Minister, Krista Freeland, um, because I understand um, the frustration you have with, with, with the BDC. I probably heard that 10 times in, in the last few days. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I will do some advocacy on that. In terms of insurance, I've been hearing this left, right, and center as well. Um, insurance is actually regulated by the, by the province, um, and they've offered no relief yet, uh, honestly no relief. And so um, it's probably going to require some um, provincial leadership here. And so I will bring that up um, with, uh, with, with the Premier and the Minister of Finance. Um, and so uh, on our next small business call, I'll, I'll give everyone an update on, on those two points and, and the responses we got. But I think um, they're very valid points, and thank you for raising them. Thank you, Mayor Brown. Thanks to the members of the community for speaking with us today. And we're going to move on. Before we go to your questions, we're going to go to our final polling question. This is our next poll. The question is, would you be willing to share information about temporary job opportunities with your laid-off employees? to help them secure employment until you are ready to hire them back. Once again, would you be willing to share information about temporary job opportunities with your laid off employees to help them secure employment until you are ready to hire them back again? Press one for yes, press two for no. So now we're gonna move on to take questions from you. I know many of you have been waiting to ask, and so thank you for your patience. Just as a reminder, if you wish to ask a question, press star three. So for our first uh, question, we're going to go to Haloni from Shruti's Beauty Spa and Salon. Haloni, are you there? Yes, hi, how are you? Very good, go ahead. Yeah, so Almost my question is already done regarding the grant I am asking because right now it's already closed. And other thing, I don't know when it, everything will be come out regularly. So I just want to know how the government will help. And I know I talked, I emailed on uh, Patrick Brown and uh, someone sent me a message for BDC, but I call them, no one is response. I know they are busy right now, but I don't know what to do it and how to do it. 
and we didn't re- get any form from our landlord and our landlord is not talking to us i don't know what to do it so is anyone help me for that okay uh polini it's uh, patrick brown here what i'm going to suggest i'm disappointed the bdc didn't respond to you um so a few things on bdc uh, claire's office can um help uh, uh with you on that front just email claire after this um conference call claire.barnett at Brampton.ca, or just call her at, at the Brampton Economic Development Office, ask for Claire Barnett, and we'll help connect you with the BDC. They're pretty good at returning our calls. Um, and in terms of, the, um, of where to apply for the wage subsidy, we can. Um, it's on the federal government website, um, but um, we can send you the link to uh, once you contact us after this call. Thank you, Mayor. For our next question, we're going to go to Ralph from Roti Technologies. Ralph. Go ahead. Hello, uh, Patrick Brown. Everyone, uh, Rati, by the way, is an app technology innovation. And I'm hopefully practically impacting me. But I am in development for secure computers that doesn't need McAfee or Norton to visit infected websites, et cetera which represents a significant economic benefit for Brampton, Ontario, and Canada. But my concern is my activity in this realm has resulted in excessively little support in order to bring this technology forward such that when the COVID-19 crisis subsides, we can move forward with new innovative products to strengthen our economy to support innovation for tomorrow's th- new thinking and manufacturing. Okay, thank you, Ralph. Uh, and so, Ralph, you're, you, in terms of the innovation, this is changing the economy. And so, you know, Councillor Vicente was mentioning um, yesterday on a call about how businesses can, can set up an Amazon shop, and how you can look at how you can market online, about how, you know, we all need to embrace uh, technology. And so in terms of your sentiments on innovation and how we can adapt our local businesses, we are giving, we got a team at, at ExDev that are giving thoughts to how we can help mentor businesses towards that. Um, it's still in its infancy stage right now in terms of um, how we can do that. But, uh, you know, we are, we are putting our minds towards that. Thank you. For our next caller, we have Anthony from Arcadia Academy. Anthony from Arcadia Academy. Are you there, Anthony? Yes, I'm here. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, I just have two questions. Uh, the first one is a landlord already sent us an email about legally binding for payments and there will be no deferrals, no nothing. Uh, legally, what happens if they're not willing to negotiate with us? Because I propose doing at least half rent till uh, we get back on our feet. And it doesn't seem like it's going to be going that route. Uh, with them because they're using all this fancy, smanchy legal stuff. Uh, so legally, what can they do? I guess they, if they can still shut me down through all this. And number two is um, the federal government was saying they're going to give up to the $40,000 loan uh, for businesses to help us out. Um, I already went to my bank last week and tried to getting a loan, but because of being a small business owner, I had a lot of expenses at the beginning. My credit score isn't the greatest, and therefore they already declined me any for like even like a a line of credit and, and any of those uh, any of those stuff. I also asked them if they got up my MasterCard, and that got no as well. So I was wondering, with this new financing coming in, what happens if we have uh, bad credit? And then also with um, the legal, legality of uh, the landlords uh, picking on us, because it seems like just the landlords are like the only businesses that don't want to be affected by this at all. Like They're just saying, you owe us, and that's it. It's your problem. And I don't see why, like, the majority of them are not working with us, where some of the smaller landlords are, but the majority I'm hearing is that they're not willing to work with us. It's, this, is what it's, this is what it's old, this is legal, this is your lease, and this is the way it is. We don't care. And that's it. Thank you. Thanks for your question, Anthony. It's Claire Barnett uh, with Economic Development in Brampton. Um, if you would like to give me a call after, we can work with you specifically through uh, your challenges that you've raised. Um, generally, um, you're quite right that your agreement um, with your landlord would still be legally binding, um, that 
it will have to be a negotiation between you um, and your landlord. Um, as far as we know, to date, the province um, hasn't um, come out with any regulation or legislative changes related to business and eviction. Um, but let's look into that with you so that we can get you the right information. Um, and if you want to send myself or my team an email, um, if you send one to the COVID-19 business at brampton.ca, anyone with any questions like this that's very specific to your business and your industry, uh, we can work with you specifically on your question. Thank you, Claire. So just underline the email to connect with our economic development team is COVID19business at brampton.ca. We're just going to very quickly go to uh, another member of our business community, Sham from The Works. Sham, are you there? Are you there, Sham? Sham is not there, so we'll just move on to our next question from Kevin Allen. Kevin Allen from Top Rock Climbing. Kevin, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Thank you so much for having me on the call today. Um, yeah, again, my name is Kevin Allen I'm from Top Rock Climbing. So we're Brampton's first uh, rock climbing gym. And uh, just to give people a little bit of background, our business hits a couple different sectors. So we are a little bit in entertainment because people go out to enjoy like a date night or have a birthday, but we also heavily fall into uh, recreation. So we have members and people that are coming on a day-to-day -day basis. And so similar to uh, what Deep was mentioning before, uh, we're in that industry that we were forced to close just because we do have groups of individuals. And my question is, do you guys have plans for how to help businesses that have large groups of individuals coming and how to rebuild their business after COVID-19 is finished? And uh, the reason why I kind of want to start the conversation now is, if in six months when everything is over, if we start the conversation then, it might be too hard or too much longer to build back the business. And for us especially, like, we have zero income. Well, we have very little income coming in right now other than some support from gift cards and purchases online. But uh, I really feel that this whole endeavor is going to put our business back by more than a full year. And so, great question. And you know, the reason the task force is called economic um, support and recovery is we're looking at how we can support you during the pandemic and then the recovery afterwards. We don't know how long this is going to last, and whether it's two months, six months, or a year, um, it's all very much in flux. And I would say, and I've said this for the last few weeks, everyone should prepare for months, not weeks. And I know that's not what you want to hear as a small business community, but I think. Uh, us being transparent and honest with um, how serious this is um, is important. Uh, and so in terms of the recovery a afterwards, everything is on the table. And obviously we're, we're constrained by the Municipal Act in terms of what we can do, but I would say any good ideas on, on, on the table, um, obviously we're going to have some aggressive campaigns to get people out and supporting our local businesses afterwards. Um, and if you have suggestions, I know I've got a few ideas for the hospitality sector, but if you have suggestions for your sector of how we could encourage and create incentives for the public to come out and embrace uh, small businesses in your sector, uh, I would welcome those ideas. And once again, my email is patrick.brown at brampton.ca. Not sure, Claire, if you want to add to that as well? Um, sure. And that um, fundamentally, it's about your business case and uh, what you can have funded and what your growth projections can be. And we can work with you on that. The BEC team, that's the, the type of service and advisory services that we have been doing for, for many years. Um, and we will certainly be augmenting those services. For now, they are virtual, one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. But the team are also putting together calls um, for groups of people to, that are in, in the same sector. Um, so we can start looking at which sectors uh, you'd like us to do. Um, and you can reach that team through the COVID-19 business at brampton.ca email address. Um, and we will be doing those calls. We will promote them. And we will help you as we start recovering. Um, and as the mayor said, that's the intention of the task force is business support right now from a very uh, micro perspective, but then the recovery from a macro perspective as well. 
Thank you, Claire, and thank you, Sham, for your question. We're going to be taking a few more of your questions very shortly, but before we do so, we're going to give you the results of our final poll question. The question was, would you be willing to share information about temporary job opportunities with your laid-off employees to help them secure employment until you're ready to hire them back again? 83% of you said that you would be willing to share that information. Only 17% no. So thank you for answering that poll question. Yeah, and on that note, we should mention we have had companies that come to us with increased um, human resource demands uh, given the crisis. In the logistics sector, we had uh, companies that are involved in uh, shipping and moving um, goods that have desperately asked for, 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 for people those in the packaging sector, and if you send, uh, if you email Claire afterwards, she can send you the list of job postings. Amazon just had a surge, uh, obviously, their warehouse and their fulfillment center in, in Brampton, and so there are some temporary jobs that could be available to laid off um, employees during this uh, pandemic. Thank you, Mayor. We're going to be going right until 12.30, and so we'll move on quickly to our next question. A question that shows a different perspective, Dave Kapil from Kapil Financial. Dave, are you there? Hi, everyone. First of all, I want to congratulate you guys. Uh, you are, can you hear me? Yes, you're on live. Yeah, yeah. First of all, I want to congratulate you guys for doing an amazing, amazing job. I love you guys, man. You guys are doing absolutely magnificent. Um, the second thing is um, I'm, I'm, I want to talk from the, on, on behalf of uh, probably the landlord side of things. Um, um, what you may want to keep in mind, the business is that I think I think most landlords, especially the smaller landlords, uh, would want to work with you. However, what businesses want to keep in mind, they don't want to take advantage of that. And the reason is I could be, as a landlord, I could have a tenant who actually really needs help, cannot get a loan from anywhere else to make the payments, and I want to be able to help him survive. But if everybody is coming to us, or, or the landlords and saying, listen, you know, you know, give us a break on the rent when they can get the loan, and when they can manage their payments, you know, then it, it makes it difficult for those who are not able to uh, make payments. So you need to sort of, everybody has to be really human and not take advantage of the situation and want to help and work with the landlords. Um, the other thing we are doing is with our, uh, with our tenants is we are basically saying, listen, we have certain expenses we must pay because if you don't pay, building goes on power of sale and you get in trouble. So we have to pay those expenses. So for example, TMI would be minimum expense. So with some of the tenants, what we've done is we have gone down to, okay, just give us the TMI and give us a bit of the interest costs for a mortgage which you need to pay and uh, until we get the deferral from the bank. And if we don't get a deferral from the bank, then we have a problem. But um, so, uh, and, and defer the rest of the rent because eventually you will have to pay that rent. You can't get away from it. So if you can get a loan from the bank, it might help somebody else. You might be actually helping somebody else who cannot get a loan or who cannot pay the actual rent. So please work with your landlords, and I hope I request all the landlords to work with, with the tenants and not to shut them down because this is a difficult times. We have to work as a team. Well, Having said you, that... Dave, so, thank you, Dave, for that, uh, that question and that commentary. What I would note, uh, I'm glad that as a landlord you've been understanding and giving some of your tenants the ability to only pay TMI what our concern is is that there's some landlords that aren't being as generous and accommodating um, as you. And my plea to landlords in Brampton is really um, do whatever you can to help these small businesses through this period. You know, we've deferred property taxes. I'd be disappointed if there's not some relief going to businesses from that. We're considering changes to um, the, uh, the the levy in the in the downtown. Uh, once again, that would only be on the table if we're convinced that businesses landlords would would pass would pass it on. Um, you know, my my message to landlords is it's great to have a tenant, but if the tenant can't survive and goes out of business, you've lost that land, uh, that that tenant. So now is the time for um, being accommodating. And certainly we'll let everyone know the support that's available for loans and the BDC and the federal government, um, but we really need our landlords in Brampton to be as understanding as possible because my worry is, my worry is the longer this lasts, and if it goes six months, eight months, uh, there'll be significant businesses that go under. And so we need to make sure that we stick together as a community um, because this is a Brampton economic ecosystem, and uh, we, uh, if there's ever a time we need to stick together and show compassion, it's, it's right now. But I take your point, uh, Dave, that, that landlords are facing some 
financial adversity as well as they go through this. Thank you, Mayor. We have a few more minutes. Our next question comes from Apama, from Clark and Company. Apama, are you there? Thanking um, Brampton in general and Mayor Brown, you've just done an amazing job. Um, I'm sort of the other end of the spectrum. We're a service provider that provides trained staff for the autism community. Um, and, you know, as you can imagine, most of our clients and support have really been affected, and I've got families in crisis. Um, I've been working with some volunteers to get out some PPE to, um, and so my plea is really to the business community that, guys, I understand that we're all struggling. Every business is struggling. But really, as Brampton, we are a city with heart. Like, let's, let's band together and help each other out. I'm, like, personally, I've tried to contact your office, Mayor Brown, to find out. I don't want to circumvent what needs to go to the hospital because they need to go first. But I need to know how I can, like, I've, I've invested in Zoom. I've got uh, people stand by. I'm really trying to connect with, with somebody in the province. I've tried to connect with Mr. Smith's uh, office as well through the OAC just to provide, because we've got families who are in major crisis. I spoke to two moms this morning. I'll be speaking to another mom this afternoon of children who've just had all their supports pulled. And I, I'm, I'm like, I don't know how to help them. I don't know how to reach them. Because a lot of service providers in Brampton have just closed shop and left them with nothing. Okay, so there. Yeah, so if you could please reach out to us um, after this call, we'd like to talk to you a little bit more about that in terms of what um, your process would have been under normal circumstances, and then we can see how we can um, help you find a new way of, of doing business, for lack of another term. Thank you, Claire. We want to try to get to as many questions as possible. Our next caller is Dr. Rushi. Dr. Rushi, are you there? Thank you so much for having me, and I truly appreciate uh, the efforts Brampton City Province and the Government of Canada is doing it to help us all. Uh, we truly appreciate. Now, my, I represent my company, which is into aerospace sector, and what we are dealing is majorly into down service sector. So, having said that, uh, our majority of bread and butter was on uh, based on clients' requirement and operational services. And at, on top of that, uh, we are also dependent on uh, different uh, procurement uh, tenders from uh, Canadian Space Agency or National Research Council, etc. So my question comes down is, in this difficult time when we have uh, limited or zero cash flow, e cash inflow as of now, and uh, if, you want to dip, if you want to apply for certain uh, RFPs, uh, I cannot see any... Uh, comment or advisory whether the RFP deadlines are extended or not because in this difficult time when we have uh, uh, no support from our employees uh, because they have already been laid off temporarily or they are, they are working from home for with limited resources, is there any possibility if we can get some extension for different RFPs by Government of Canada? So at least it will help us to uh, sustain by the time the industry will pump up again with the uh, projects and business uh, with our clients. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Um, we were going to follow up for you in terms of what the Government of Canada is doing for extending um, their RFPs or procurement process or when they think they will be live again. Uh, have you reached out to the Ontario Aerospace Council or the Ontario Government at all with that question? If you haven't, that's something that you may want to look into. And again, uh, send me an email and we will connect you with the Ontario Aerospace Council and the Ministry of Economic Development uh, with the Ontario government because they have probably uh, had this question already as well and we'll find out what uh, the status is for you. Thank you, Claire. Next, we'll move on to Peter's Greenhouses Garden Centre. Peter's Greenhouse Garden Centre, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi. Just wanted to thank you for taking my call and for the amazing job that um, the city of Frampton is doing to help small businesses. So my question is, with businesses that are seasonal that depend on the next, let's say, three months to make their annual income to survive for the year, um, is there anything, like, it's not going to help for a business in our situation that gets a loan that is due the end of April when our season is open, 
Um, also, my other question is, I understand the Canadian Tire stores. I understand that uh, um, Home Depot and Rona's, they're going to be able to carry nursery stock. Are we going to be considered under the essential uh, part of a business to be open as we will be selling, um, let's say, vegetable plants, people that want to plant their gardens and, you know, get their 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 um, you know gardens going and that sort of thing. So that's my two questions. Okay, um, I will raise that on my call later today with Dr. Lawrence Lowe, um, who's the medical officer of health. Whether you'd fit into that category, I would note that we, on our last um, teletown hall with Lawrence Lowe, he said that he hopes people go in their backyards and garden and they're outside as long as it's you know, not in groups of people. Uh, he said being in your backyard. Uh, gardening is a great way to, to get some fresh air. And so uh, given that advice that he gave only a few days ago, you know, your business may have um, an opportunity um, to, mm-hmm. to, to service that uh, suggestion of the medical officer of health. So uh, one, I will find out whether you're allowed to stay open. And two, you should think about for people who are scared to leave their home right now. And obviously, if I was a senior, I would not be going anywhere. If I was someone with a pre-existing medical condition, I would not be leaving the home. You may want to consider um, how you could adapt your business to do some home delivery of gardening materials. Um, as increasingly, I think, as the weather gets better, you're going to be hearing medical officers of health making that recommendation, be in your backyard, garden, um, and uh, your business could, could be a niche market that actually grows in this period. So uh, we'll get back to you tomorrow. Claire will get back to you if you mm-hmm. email her yep. on whether you, you, you fit into the category. Yes. But please think of both angles of, of that, of, uh, of how you can meet a market where uh, the service is, is ordered and delivered to the home. Thank you. We'll take one more question. Our next question is from Raki, Small Ethnic Media. Raki, are you there? Hi. Yes, I'm here. Good afternoon to everyone. That was quite a long wait, but nevertheless, uh, Unfortunately, uh, like whatever I've been hearing uh, so far has sort of put me in more stress because as uh, you all know, it's, I'm, I represent a small ethnic media which is struggling badly but, uh, and I cannot even express my struggle in words. But nevertheless, today I wanted to talk about a couple of things. Uh, Patrick uh, Brown as mayor, I know, is doing a good job and I believe can do even better. Like, what is concerning is there are these headlines that are going around about Brampton. Just to uh, quote a few, like, one says that two pedestrians were hospitalized after being struck by a vehicle in Brampton. Then another one says a list of Brampton restaurants opened during coronavirus pandemic. And then the most significant one where it says that coronavirus cases in Brampton uh, triple uh, by 60 in five days. Like, what I feel is all these headlines convey that the lockdown is ineffective in Brampton or the people of Brampton are not listening. And again, like, as a mayor, I feel the mayor needs to be connecting with the residents even more. Like, not, I know that some of us can connect through these town hall meetings, but everybody cannot. Everybody cannot do that. They need to see the mayor more. Like, do it via podcast, do it via uh use the the avenues of CP24, CTV, uh, do that. But I feel that the mayor needs to be connecting with the residents and to uh, assure them to not be scared because I'm sure Patrick is hearing the scare in everybody's voices. And uh, my second question is, at this time, there is a need, again, my same thing, there is a need to make the community aware of what the city is doing, perhaps a time for the city and the media to work more closely and to get the right information out to the residents. I want Patrick to please, please think about it. Think about it, sir. That's all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Rekki. Okay, uh, Rekki, thank you for your, your questions. A few things on that that I would say. One, we do do a weekly teletown hall. The last one had 15,000 Brampton families on the teletown hall. We've doubled our advertisements uh, uh, for uh, cultural and mainstream media. And so we are doing uh, ads uh, in those online and print uh, organizations to let people know what's true and what's not uh, true. We're doing a citywide newsletter to make sure that everyone understands uh, what is happening right now with COVID-19. 
Um, and uh, uh, we are doing, I, I can tell you, I, I do about 15 radio interviews uh, um, a week. We're doing a press conference tomorrow, um, and I've been on CP24 a few times uh, talking about the initiatives that Brampton is taking. It, right now, um, uh, people are glued to CBC and CNN, um, and so it's difficult uh, um, to break into that news cycle. But I think our teletown hall has been pretty effective. The fact that we have 15,000 families online at one time has been a pretty successful way to get, grab people's attention, and we'll continue to look at ways um, to, to do that increasingly. Because you're right, sometimes people believe false information. I, I saw a Facebook post about uh, a COVID-19 uh, test that went positive at Walmart, and it got shared about a thousand times, and it wasn't true. It didn't happen. And so I want to make sure people can rely on accurate information. And so I'd remind everyone on the call, on my Twitter, which is um, uh, Patrick Brown ONT, or the Region Appeal, Region Appeal Twitter, you'll see accurate um, updates. Um, and so don't, don't get confused for, for fake news. During this period of adversity, we really need to be re rely on accurate information. So we've exhausted our hour and a half for this call. I want to thank all the small businesses. We had about 250, 240 small businesses on the call today. Isn't that incredible? So thank you to the 240 small businesses that joined us. We will do this again. We will do everything we can to keep you informed during this period. I hope this has been an informative session for you. Hopefully the next time we'll get a provincial representative on as well to answer provincial questions along with the federal questions. Um, and um, we will share minutes with you and we'll be in touch to speak some more. So I look forward to keeping this dialogue moving forward. We are here to support you. And we call ourselves Team Brampton at City Hall because our goal is to, is to support the Brampton ecosystem, and that's you. You're the job creators. You're the ones working hard, and it's our job to support you. So don't hesitate to reach out. Please stay safe, and thank you for joining us.